So we kind of have a health crisis that's causing an economic crisis um, or kind of a shock as you described it. Uh, there's a lot of economic policies that have been uh, implemented. What's kind of your general view of what's already been done and maybe even what needs to be done in the future? Right. So. Uh, you know, my mentor is Art Laffer. I don't know if you're familiar with the Laffer Curve Supply Side Economics, but he advises Trump, uh, President Trump, informally, regularly. And I know because I hear during the task force briefings, I hear some of the things that Art Laffer says coming out of President Trump's uh, mouth. Uh, in the beginning, Art was very frustrated that they were just throwing money at this, uh, just willy-nilly and uh, effectively, uh, effectively throwing money at the idea that we don't want people to work. And from, from one point of view, that was correct. Uh, we wanted people, if they could, to work from home, of course, but we wanted them to be safe, first and foremost. Um, they had as so the the programs that were being designed in the early days and were just throw the money at them have been modified so that um, you're seeing more in the form of loans to small businesses and others uh, that will have to be repaid after a, a, a long grace period. So that is good just to keep the infrastructure in place to keep the to allow the employment to rebound uh, afterwards instead of unlike in a reset recession where you have capital uh, destruction uh, you it takes a long time to work through it and then to come back so I think that's good I think it's good that they ha are sending checks out to those who can who are living paycheck to paycheck um, but I think a more important uh, way to help those people and would have the same effect would be to say, and I've heard President Trump mention it, it hasn't been put into any um, legislation yet, uh, to for basically go on a payroll tax holiday, uh, both, both for the employers and the employees uh, through the end of the year. What would that do? It would say, it would encourage businesses who are getting these uh, holidays and employees to get back to work as quickly as it possible to take advantage of the holiday and increase uh, their returns by six to seven percent on either side. That's huge. That's the tax wedge that uh, Art Laffer talks about all the time. Uh, if you get rid of that wedge, you'll bring a lot more activity back much sooner than otherwise would be the case. Uh, and I think the other, uh, in terms of the way they're treating larger corporations, I think uh, uh, they're creating inducements to rev back up faster. What they're doing is they're saying, okay, if you take these loans, uh, then you cannot buy, buy back shares or pay dividends for a year past when, uh, and I don't know if the legislation has changed here a bit, but this is how it was being written, a year past uh, the day you repay those loans. Well, what, what will that uh, cause? Shareholders certainly will want their companies to, uh, to get back on track much faster so they can pay back the loans to the government and then get back to paying dividends, uh, which for many people are a large chunk of their, uh, of their income, especially retirees, uh, and to repurchase shares, which uh, favors all shareholders. So I think they're doing things, they're, they're gradually getting it right and very sensitive. You hear more and more about, um, you hear uh, certainly the president and the vice president talking about getting people back to work safely. So you'll have Pence uh, focused on the safety and you'll have Trump focused on getting back to work. And it's a good dynamic and an important dynamic, I think. Yeah. Are you worried at all? Um, you know, we're in a deflationary environment now. Uh, there's a lot of QE going on. Uh, are you one worried that we could over rotate on the inflationary side when we switch back? Um, and are there any impacts that, uh, that you foresee potentially on the U.S. dollar um, as kind of a, a global asset or reserve asset? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so the first question, and when we can, um, we can take some of, um, we can inform the answer to that 
question partly by what happened after 08, 09. So I remember when, you know, it was QE everything, you know, uh, I remembered being concerned saying, wow, this is just such an inducement to take a lot of risk and just go out there and go for it. That's not what happened. What happened was people were so traumatized by the near breakdown of our financial and economic system that they were not sure we were going to be able to hold together. And, uh, you know, there were, there were all kinds of uncertainties, including what became the election year. You know, we had the European sovereign debt crisis. Uh, we had uh, in 16 oil prices crashing. Uh, like they have recently, and China seeming to implode. And so every step along the way, there was a reason for people to hold back and not uh, throw everything that they have at risk taking. And in fact, the, loss, the velocity of money, which is the critical answer here, has been falling, and my guess is falling at an accelerated rate now. And so all of that QE, most of it is still sitting on the balance sheets of central banks. Now, the way I think about that still is that is kindling for the fire, potential fire that you're talking about, but that kindling hasn't been lit for the past 10 years because every step along the way, including uh, the China-US trade conflict and the inverted yield curves, every one of those steps along the way has been a reason to recoil and say, so the velocity of money has continued to come down. Uh, now, we have M2 today growing at a 15% year-over-year rate, which is, I believe, the fastest. I mean, you have to go back a lot of years to see that. I think many people have gotten used to this idea that we can throw anything we want at the system and velocity will fall and offset it. There will become a day and this could be the beginning, but I don't think it will, I don't think we'll see the ramifications in terms of inflation for, I'm going to say, at least a year and a half, maybe two years. Because first, we still do have a little bit of this seizing up and people saying, is my job going to be there? So that's one reason. Uh, and business is the same, is my business going to exist? So again, another reason. If you look, I just listened to the JP Morgan call this morning and you know, so many businesses have taken down their revolvers completely. You know, So they are just awash in cash. They're awash in cash. And uh, they did the same thing in uh, 08, 09. But again, nothing happened. Everybody being scared every step along the way. So the reason we won't have an inflation problem for the next 18 months, two years, is, there are two reasons. One, oil prices have crashed and oil is a big part of you know, uh, the input. And, and there's a good reason secularly for oil to crash. We, we talk about it all the time. I think oil is going down longer term to $10 or less per barrel. And I've been saying that for a while. That's a personal point of view. And that's because of electric vehicles and autonomous electric vehicles at the margin uh, gas-powered cars are going to start losing out, and commodity prices are determined at the margin. That's what a lot of people miss when they say, oh, well, electric vehicles are only 2% of all sales. No, uh, they're a much higher percentage of the growth in the auto industry, right? So, so the first reason is that major input to so many industries. The second is... Um, Typically, if we're going to have a V-shaped recovery, what, what will happen is productivity will surge. Now, productivity was already starting to surge. So again, this idea of forces in motion, continue in motion. I think the accelerated shift into new technologies now is going to cause an acceleration in productivity growth. Uh, we're probably going to see productivity growth numbers in the next year that we haven't seen, I'm going to say, since the 60s. Uh, so that's, that's another reason. Productivity is a huge force against inflation. Because, why? Because uh, a company which benefits from productivity can do three things with it. It can increase wages. So if, they, if, com if companies have labor shortages, they will increase uh, uh, 
wages, but not now. Nobody has labor shortage because uh, the unemployment rate's gonna go to 15% or whatever or higher. Um, it can go to lower prices to compete and bring com consumers back and to compete against China because China is using innovation uh, and deflation to compete. Uh, so that's another thing that could happen here, which would reinforce this disinflationary cycle. Or it can go to increase profit margins. And it's probably going to, depending on the industry, going to go to all three. So I don't think we'll see inflation uh, in the near term. I do worry about it now that no one thinks it's possible anymore. I remember starting in the business, it was the late 70s, I was in college, and I remember looking at these CPI numbers that were coming out and economists didn't, didn't believe them because they thought inflation had been licked that when really it had just started because we went off the gold exchange standard in 1971. But no one could believe the numbers we were seeing. And that's because they had been lulled into complacency that the Fed could do anything it wanted. Well, I think that we're back in that situation, but we will not face, and I know where you're going with this, obviously, Bitcoin, we won't face the real ramifications for another couple of years. Um, but, you know, I know uh, we've increased our Bitcoin exposure we're in the discretionary portfolios at ARC. Uh, and um, I, think, uh, I think it's the right thing to do from an insurance policy point of view. Yeah, we'll, we're definitely going to get to Bitcoin for sure.